The Elves and the Shoemaker. There was once a shoemaker who worked very hard and was very honest, but still he could not earn enough to live upon. And at last, all he had in the world was gone with just leather enough to make one pair of shoes. He cut his leather out, all ready to make up the next day, mean to rise early in the morning to do his work. His conscience was clear and his heart light amidst all his troubles. So he went peacefully to bed, left all his cares to heaven and soon fell asleep. In the morning, after he had said his prayers, he sat himself down to do his work. When, to his great wonder, there stood the shoes, all ready, made upon the table. The good man knew not what to say or think at such an odd thing happening. He looked at the work machine. There was not one false stitch in the whole job. All was so neat and true. It was quite a masterpiece. The same day a customer came in and the shoes, shoes suited him so well that he willingly paid a price higher than usual for them. And the poor shoemaker with the money bought leather enough to make two pairs more. In the evening, he cut out the work and went to bed early that he might get up and begin his work the next day. But he was saved all the trouble. For when he got up in the morning, the work was done ready to his hand. Soon in came buyers who paid him handsomely for his goods, so that he bought enough leather for four pairs more. He cut out the work again overnight and found it done in the morning, as before. And so it went on for some time. And what was got ready in the evening was always done by daybreak, and the good man soon became thriving and well off again. One evening, about Christmas time, as he and his wife were sitting over the fire chatting together, he said to her, I should like to sit up and watch tonight, that we may see who it is that comes and does the work for me. The wife liked the thought, so they left a light burning and hid themselves in the corner of the room, behind a curtain that was hung up there, and watched what would happen. As soon as it was midnight, there came in two little elves, and they sat themselves upon the shoemaker's bench, took up all the work that was cut out and began to ply with their little fingers, stitching and wrapping and tapping away at such a rate that the shoemaker was all wonder and could not take his eyes off them. On they went till the job was quite done and the shoe stood ready for use upon the table. That was long before daybreak and then they bustled away as quick as lightning. The next day the wife said to the shoemaker, those little people have made us rich and we ought to be thankful to them and do them a good turn if we can. I am quite sorry to see them run about as they do, and indeed it is not very decent, for they have nothing upon their backs to keep off the cold. I'll tell you what, I'll make each of them a shirt and a coat, and a waistcoat, and a pair of trousers, and you would do well to, each, to make each of them a little pair of shoes. The thought pleased the good shoemaker very much, and one evening, when all the things were ready, they laid them on the table, instead of the work that they used to cut out. And then they went and hid themselves to watch what the little elves would do. About midnight and they came, dancing and skipping, hopped round the room and then went to sit down to do their work as usual. But when they saw the clothes lying for them, they laughed and chuckled and seemed mightily delighted. Then they dressed themselves in the twinkling of an eye and danced and capered and sprang about as merry as could be, till at last they danced out at the door and away over the green. The good couple saw them no more, but everything went well with them from that time forward, as long as they lived.